You should have a valid reason. And there, sh there, is, there should be a style in which you get anger. Oh, put a more style. In the style of over. And you should know how to control that anger. Some people say, if I get angry, I don't know what I will do. Then you are not fit to get angry. When you do not know what to do, then why do you get angry? So you should know how to control your anger. The one who does that is called Drape. Drape and Dasaspade Daridran Nilalohita tells Vedam. So Rama is also called as Rudra in Sanskritam. That is why Rudram can be recited towards Paramashiva, Lord Shiva, towards Narasimha and Rama. Yadayushu Shiva Tama Shivam Bhabhuva He carries the Kodandam, like how Shiva carries Pinaki. So Rama, generally a very seasoned, cultured, civilized person, got angry at that point in time. What was the reason? Because his favorite devotee was harmed. So there was a reason and he had anger in a style. He could hit back through arrows. Can we do? He will aim that ball. It will not fall at that place. We are, I am at least such kind of a person. We won't aim at the right place. So Rama got angry. So, so, see, um, so Andal tells, I love his anger. See, had we, just imagine, nobody should be in that position. Now some people get really offended on a lighter way. Imagine that we are in Rama's position. One, uh, my, I will take my example. My wife is kidnapped. <laughs> now some people should, don't even say, just for name's sake. Huh? I won't have the ability to go in a correlation with monkeys, constructing a bridge. I will now speak like a philosopher. See, life is like this. We have to accept karma. Wherever she is, may she live happily in the world. Rama was not that kind of a person. He thought he had to work towards and get her back. That showed his love. Right, so he worked towards it. And amongst the Nayaka and Nayika Bhavam, it is expected that by the Nayika, that the Nayaka will get angry in certain occasions. Imagine, Sita and Rama are there, Sita is being abducted. And Rama is a very cultured individual. Namaskaram Ravana. Cultured individual, seasoned one. May you be blessed with Maharakshmi's presence. No, he has to get angry at that point in time. So Anda, it says, I fell in love with Rama's anger. So Rama got angry at what treatment was meted to Hanuman by Ravana and he started shooting arrows. Now he, his archery skills were so beautiful and so very indescribable that Ravana was defeated. And Ravana didn't have arrows at all. He checked on Amazon, no stop. <laughs> nothing available. That is when Rama said, maybe you are a bit tired. You have lost probably a lot of your weapons. Probably you may go take rest. Think for some time and then come tomorrow. Indra boy, this was the biggest insult even to Ravana. Nobody has done this to Ravana. Ravana went home. How dare he say that go home and come back. I will kill this Sita. That is when Malyavan stopped. See, you have been fighting all this battle for her. And if you end up killing her, then what is the use of fighting this battle? Wait for some time. Then he sends, he asks Indrajit to fight the battle. Indrajit, he does a Nikumbala Devi Yagam. Nikumbala is regarded as one of the Devatas who is used for occult purposes. Uh, I have very little knowledge about this, but in Sri Vidya Upasana, there will be many devotees who may follow Shaktism. In Sri Vidya, Sri Chakram becomes one important geometrical figure because that is the construct of a city in which Lalita stays. It is called Sri Puram. So the first 20% of Lalita Sahasranavam is devoted to Sri Chakram. 
So you say, uh, uh, in this place, who stands, who stands in protection? Bhanda suravadhotyukta shakti sena samanvita sampatkari samarudha sindhura prajasevita ashwarudha dishtitaksha koti koti viravrita chakrarada ratharudha dandanada puraskrita jwalamali nikakshipta vanhi prakara madhyaga uh, all this describes the Shri Puram. So there are walls in every aspect in Shri, Shri Chakra. It is called Avaranam. Avaranam means fortress, wall. So there are nine. Hence, Dikshita wrote Navavaranam. So, चक्रम सो एवरी चक्र हेज अ नेम देर इज वन डेटी हू रूल्स दट I don't know much about uh, 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 Shri Vidya. Whatever little I know, I'm telling you. So there is one deity who rules Adhidevata for that chakram. So as you go one step above the other, it's like a pyramid. Shri chakram in a three dimension is like a pyramid. Two dimension also you can draw. So the one who sits in the middle is Lalita Parameshwari. So below her there is one chakram. The watchwoman for that is called Matangi. Matangi. Shri Raja Rajeshwari Mama Bami Nakshi Raja Matangi Madhura Vani Varali Veni She plays Veena So she is called Raja Matangi So every chakram will have an Adhidevata The first chakram will have Devatas who could be worshipped even for small reasons. One of the Devis is called Nikumbala. So this Indrajit performed Nikumbala Devi Yagam. That will give them extra power. That boost is the secret of my energy. So they can go and fight. Now Vibheshana got one message. He had planted many spies here and there. Nikumbala Devi Yagam is happening. That evening, that night itself, he takes Lakshmana. And says, Lakshmana, you have to fight Indrajit now, else he will get very powerful if this Yagam is completed. That is when Ra uh, Lakshmana has to fight Indrajit. Indrajit was a person who knew how to lure the person opposite him so that the person becomes weak while fighting. So to win over this, Lakshmana thinks the only way to end the battle is to release an astram <coughs> thinking of Rama. So he releases one astram reciting this. Dharmatma Satya Sandhascha Ramo Dasharathir Yadi Paurushecha Apratidvandvam Tadainam Jahi Ravanim Ravani, the son of Ravana called Indrajit, may he be killed with this astra that I am releasing if I believe that my brother Rama is a Satya Sandha, Dharmatma. If what I believe is true, let this guy arrow go and hit. See how much confidence he had on Rama. If somebody releases arrow, wobbling on us. Huh? I release this uh, arrow thinking that Dushyant is sincere, honest, humble, grounded. Nothing will happen. <laughs> Because we are none of this, right? So that arrow went and hit Indrajit and Indrajit was killed. Next day, finally, Ravana had to come to the Yuddha Bhumi. He came on a uh, chariot and opposite today, Hanuman was not required because Indra sent his chariot previous. Now pe people ask, why didn't he say previous day? He would have gone for some workshop, I don't know. <laughs> so today, Mudalli in the Kelvi in the Kupatta, he is a so, that chariot was sent by Indra today. Indra sent it along with his driver, Mathali. Mathali came and said, Indra has dispatched, this is our plate number, all toll, we have filled that money, you don't have to worry, Rama, you sit. Now, 
Andal was extremely happy about Rama sitting on the chariot of Indra and that going. So she tells in the Tamil Prabandham, Nachiyar Thirumudi, Mathali, Mun Ter Kolla. She tells, Mathali drove the chariot in the front. This is redundant, right? Generally, how will you drive? He took the car forward. That is what the car is meant to do, right? That is what the book is meant for, right? So, Andal took the chariot forward. What does she imply? Andal will not use words unnecessarily. Why did she have to do this? The commentator says, Mathali was the charioteer to Indra till then. So, when Indra fought a war, the charioteer knew only the reverse gear. He will never take the chariot forward. Indra will say, okay, I cannot fight this war, you take the chariot back, call some Raja from Ayodhya or Kashi. For the first time, Mathali was aware that the chariot can also go forward because he was a charioteer to Rama. That is why Andal tells Mathali, Mun Ter Kulla, the chariot went forward. So then Rama started fighting um, Ravana. Ravana became so fatigued in the middle that he swooned. The charioteer couldn't withstand this. He quietly took the chariot away from the battlefield. Ravana had not told this to the charioteer. He took away because he wanted to see ultimately the charioteer, whatever be it, he has to protect his rathi. So he took that away. At that point in time, even Rama looked a bit fatigued. So many days of war, no proper food there, even he would have gotten tired. At that point in time, Agastya arrives. Agastya arrives and says, Rama, you need to boost yourself. You have got vitamin D deficiency. So I let me invoke Surya Deva. Your melanin will work well now. You will get better energy. And that is when Aditya Hridayam is taught. Tato Yuddha Parishrantam Samare Chintaya Sthitam Ravanam Chagrato Drishtva Yuddhaya Samupasthitam Varakajolano Pravid Ramam Agastyo Bhagavan Rishihi Rama Rama Mahabaho Shunu Guhyam Sanatanam Yena Sarvan Narin Vatsa Samare Vijayishyasi Aditya Hridayam Punyam Sarva Shatru Vinashanam Jayabaham Jabed Nityam Akshayam Paramam Shivam Sarva Mangala Mangalyam Sarva Papa Pranashanam Chinta Shoka Prashamanam Ayur Vardhana Muttamam Rashmi Mantam Samudhyantam Deva Sura Namaskritam Pooja Yasva Vivaswantam Bhaskaram Bhubaneshwaram Sarva Deva Atma Gokhyesha Tejasvi Rashmi Bhavana Yesha Deva Sura Ganan Lokan Patika Bhastibhi Yesha Brahma Cha Vishnu Sucha Shiva Skanda Prajapati Mahendro Dhana Dakkalo Yama Somo Hya Pampati Pitaro Vasa Vasa Dhyaya Yashvina Umaru Tomanu Vayur Vanhi Praja Pranaha Ritu Karta Prabhakara Aditya Savita Surya Khagav Pushaga Bhastiman Suvarna Sadrishobhanur Hiranyareta Divakara Harida Shvasahasra Archir Sapta Saptir Marichiman Timiron Mathana Shambhus Pashta Martanda Amshuman Hiranyagar Bhashishira Tapano Bhaskar Oravi Agnigar Bho Adidev Putra Shanka Shishira Nashana Vyomanathas Tamo Bhedi Rigya Jussama Paraga Ghana Vrishtir Abam Mitro Vindhya Vithi Plavangamaha Atapi Mandali Mrudyu Pingada Sarva Tapanaha Kavir Vishwo Mahadeja Rakta Sarva Bhavod Bhavaha Nakshatra Grahataranam Adhipo Vishwa Bhavanaha Teja Sama Piteja Svi Dvada Shatman Namostu Te Nama Purvaya Giraye Paschima Yadraye Namaha Jyotir Gana Nam Pataye Dinadhi Pataye Namaha Jayaya Jaya Bhadraya Haryashvaya Namo Namaha Namo Nama Sahasram Shor Adityaya Namo Namaha Nama Ugraya Viraya Shrarangaya Namo Namaha Nama Padma Prabodhaya Matandaya Namo Namaha 
ಶಕ್ಷಿಣೆ ನಾಶಯತ್ಯೇಷ ವೈಭೂತ ತದೇವ ಸೃಜತಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾಯತ್ಯೇಷ ತಪದ್ಯೇಷ ವರ್ಷತ್ಯೇಷ ಗಭಸ್ತಿ ಏಷ ಸುತ್ತೇಷು ಜಾಗರ್ತಿ ಭೂತೇಷು ಪರಿನಿಷ್ಠಿತ ಏಷ ಏವಾಗ್ನಿಹೋತ್ರ ಫಲಂ ಚೈವಾಗ್ನಿಹೋತ್ರಿಣ ವೇದಾಶ್ಚೃತವಶ್ಚೈವ ಕ್ರತೂ ಫಲಮೇವ ಯಾನಿ ಕೃತ್ಯಾನಿ ಲೋಕೇಶು ಸರ್ವೇಷ ರವಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಏನ ವಾಪತ್ಸು ಕೃಷ್ಣೇಶು ಕಾಂತಾರೇಶು ಭಯೇಶು ಚ ಕೀರ್ತಯನ್ ಪುರುಷ ಕಶ್ಚಿನ್ನಾವಸೀರದಿ ರಾಘವ ಪೂಜೆಯ ಸ್ವೈ ನೇಕಾಗ್ರೋ ದೇವ ದೇವಂ ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಏತತ್ರಿಗುಣಿತ ಜಪ್ತ್ವಾಯುಧೇಶು ವಿಜಯಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ಅಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಕ್ಷಣೆ ಮಹಾಭಾಗೋ ರಾವಣ ತ್ವಂ ವಧಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ತಥಾಗಸ್ಥ್ಯೋ ಜಗಾಮ ಚ ಯಥಾಗತ ಏತತ್ಸುತ್ವಾ ಮಹಾತೇಜ ನಷ್ಟ ಶೋಕೋ ಅಭವತ್ತರ ಧಾರಯಾಮಾಸ ಸುಪ್ರೀತ ರಾಘವ ಪ್ರಯತಾತ್ಮವಾನ್ ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಪ್ರೇಕ್ಷ ಜಪ್ತ್ವಾತು ಪರಂ ಹರ್ಷಮಾಪ್ತವಾನ್ ತ್ರಿರಾಚಮ್ಯ ಶುಚಿರ್ಭೂತ್ವ ಧನುರಾದಾಯ ವೀರ್ಯವಾನ್ ರಾವಣ ಪ್ರೇಕ್ಷ ಹೃಷ್ಟಾತ್ಮ ಯುದ್ಧಾಯ ಸಮುಪಾಗಮತ್ ಸರ್ವಯತ್ನೇನ ಮಹತಾವಧೇತ ಧೃತೋ ಭವತ್ ಅಥರ ವಿರವರದ ನಿರೀಕ್ಷ ರಾಮಂ ಮುದಿತ ಮನ ಪರಮಂ ಪರಹೃಷ್ಯಮಾಣ ನಿಶಿಚರ ಪದಿ ಸಂಶಯಂ ವಿಧಿ ಸುರಗಣ ಮಧ್ಯ ಗತೋ ವಚಸ್ತ್ವರೇತಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಡ್ ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಹೃದಯ ಫಾರ್ ಓವರ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ನಾಮ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲೈಕ್ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತರ ಶತನಾಮಾವಳಿ ಯು ಗಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ನಾಮ ವಾಟ್ ಕಮೆಂಟೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ರಾಜ ಶಿವ ಸಹಾಯ ತಿಲಕ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ತೀರ್ಥ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಿವನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ತಮಿಳ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ತಮಿಳ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಹೃದಯಂ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಸಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಇನ್ ವನ ಪರ್ವ ದ ಮೊಮೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಂಡವಾಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಟು ದೆಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ವೋಕ್ ದ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಥ್ರೂ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತರ ಶತನಾಮಾವಳಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಸ್ ದೆಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಕ್ಷಯ ಪಾತ್ರ ಆಲ್ ವೇ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟೆಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಾ ಪಾಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೇ ವೆನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಾ ಪಾಟ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಡಿಶ್ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಡನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಾ ಪಾಟ್ ಓಕೆ so this is there in mahabharatam of course there is a beautiful poem on surya around the 7th century in india it is called surya shatakam by mayura kavi it is generally recited if you have got eye problems now you now see sanatana dharma when it says if you recite this your eyes will get better it doesn't mean you should not not undergo cataract not undergo any of the operations sanatana dharma believes that science is very important to understanding the creation of god so it says believe in both for example if the doctor gives you a medicine invoke the name of narayana and take that medicine it doesn't say just keep telling the name of the lord don't take the vaccine don't take the medicine no 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 you have to take this because that medicine is also a part of this creation the western world sees the creator as separate from the creation sanatana dharma believes the creator is the creation the creator is in the creation so they are not two different mutually exclusive elements there is an intersection and they are also subsets to each other so the entire world has paramatma in it thereby making paramatma a subset to the jeevatma that paramatma has the entire creation including jeevatma in it thereby making the jeevatma a subset to paramatma so they are uh, if you draw venn diagrams you can ex- explain that well now the beauty about aditya hrudayam i tell you it is very popular extremely beautiful uh, quite memorized by many astikas and recited every day by many astikas 
the commentary to Ramayana. See, you will know that the work is genuine. The verses are in the right order, accepted and found in the manuscripts till then through revered commentaries. Commentary is not happening now. Ramayana is old and you have commentaries also many in number which are revered, respected and quite well known. One such commentary which is a detailed commentary on Ramayana verses is called Bhushanam. It is also called Govinda Rajiyam by a commentator called Govinda Raja, one of the best commentators to Ramayana. While commenting upon this portion in Yuddha Kandam called as Aditya Hridayam, he comments so beautifully on every name of Surya and his final comments. He says in Sanskritam, in the manuscripts that I have received, he is talking about 800-900 years back. In the manuscripts that I have received till date, Aditya Hridayam is not found in the Valmiki Ramayana manuscripts, he says. So in the ancient manuscripts it is not found, he says. Then comes a the question, why are you commenting? He gives a reason. But this Aditya Hridayam is so popular among the Bhaktas, he tells in the commentary of Samskritam, centuries before, that there is nothing wrong if I comment upon it, but the truth is it is not found in the manuscripts. So either you can assume that Aditya Hridayam is Antargatam to Ramayana and recite, even if you think it may not fall under the original work, it is still a beautiful and revered work for Surya, because in Sanadana Dharma, you have three tools of deducing and understanding Paramatma. The first is Pratyaksham. Second is Anumanam. Third is Shabdam. So how do you understand an object? Through your five senses. If someone says, has your mother come? You will check outside and check if she is come in life. So you check through your eyes. Eyes. If only if I see, I will believe. That is one. Certain things you don't have to show also. Suppose somebody is baking a cake. Are you baking something? So your nose can be used. Certain things you will be able to know what is the taste only after tasting it. Right? Whether it's a lychee or some other fruit, I put it into my mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It isn't ice apple. It is uh, lychee. They look same. Jelly in nature. I will know only through my tongue. Certain things I have to feel. So your five senses have to come in contact with that object. So it is pratyaksha. Second is anumanam. I infer. So I see smoke somewhere coming while I am driving on the highway. I wouldn't say, let me go and check there. The moment I see the smoke, I will say, I won't say there is smoke. Oh, there is fire. I am not seeing the fire. I am inferring that there is fire looking upon the effect called smoke. That is called Anumana. Suppose uh, I say that there is a creation, then there must be a creator. That is, I am inferring. The third is Shabdam, verbal testimony from our scriptures, which says that Shastram tells there is Lord, there is Paramatma, there is Narayana, this is Shabda Pramanam. Now Shastram finally tells, if you want to see Paramatma in all his gunams through your eyes, of course, you can bring them to Shiva Vishnu temple, Ganesha temple, whatever temple is. You see, look at the Lord. So to a person who goes very logically, he'll say, this is a stone. You are calling me, you are calling this as the Lord. So how do you deduce that is when Shastram tells, if you say that Paramatma is not deterred by any effect, he is invincible, he has nobody at par with him, some of these qualities you can see day in and day out in the sun. Surya rises and sets, of course based on which latitude and longitude you are, you may have longer days, longer nights and all of it, but you see the sun. You can feel the sun because the rays that come from him can be felt. You can also see him through your eyes. So, be it verbal testimony, be it anumanam, be it pratyaksham, you see Surya. So, Surya becomes a very, very important part of the worship of any civilization. Sanatana Dharma, Indus Valley, Vedic civilization believes in Surya till day. The western civilization, some of the river valley civilizations of the other countries like Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Persian, 
also believed in Surya, Egyptian civilization, they all believed in Surya. Because the landscape of those civilizations have changed, so has the Surya worship come down. See, in Egyptian civilization, that day we were talking, the sun god is called Ra. Ra. In Greek civilization, what is he called? Surya Bhagavan Rakaryangyo. So there is sun god there as well. So in Sanatana Dharma, it is still continuing. So this sun worship is very important because day in and day out, thrice a day, you see that Paramatma within the sun and do Argyam. When you have to do Sandhya Vandanam, you, you say Dhyaya Sada Savitra Mandala Madhyavarti, the one who is within the sun. So sun becomes the substratum for whom you assume is the Lord. Now, after this, Ravana came, Rama released a Astram, Brahmastram. Now, while this is being uh, released in Ravana dies, there is one version. It seems Vibhishana said, Rama, don't hit anywhere else. There is one small pot and that pot has Amritam. It is close to the appendix below uh, in that uh, abdomen region, hit there. You have you've heard of this version? All this is not there in Ramayana. There is one pot, that pot is near appendix, nothing. He hit Ravana and he died. That's all. So, as soon as, Ra now Ravana, there are nuances here. When Ravana fell, he did not fall on the ground with his face down. He fell like this because he did not want to do a namaskaram even by leg. Oh. The dying posture. He fell like this, it seems. The moment uh, Ravana died, um, Rama said, uh, Vibhishana, as the younger brother to Ravana, you have to perform the final rites. Vibhishana said, I will not perform to this man in me too. <laughs> I will not. He has misbehaved with women. I will not do it. Rama said, Maranantani Vairani. I have enmity with Ravana on one issue that he has abducted my wife. I will not make any judgments against him otherwise. I have nothing against him but this issue. And especially after a person is dead, you should not talk bad about that person. Maranantani Vairani. If you refuse to perform the final rites for your brother Vibhishana, I have no objections. I will perform. Throughout my journey in the forest, I have been doing only Dharma Samskaram for Jatayu, for one Rishi after the other. I don't mind him being the 11th or the 12th person. That is when Vibhishana said, No, if Rama, if you are telling me something, that has to be valued. That is when Rama tells, Go get the Agni to do, uh, light his funeral pyre from the Agni Hotram that Ravana has performed. So that fire is brought and he's burnt. He's, uh, the final rites are done. Then comes Mandodari to that particular Ranabhumi. She wants to curse uh, Ra uh, Rama. Uh, of course, she. what will she curse? Oh, you have killed an anti-social element such as this. How dare you do that? If he had lived, he would have troubled more people. You have, you, you have done a great, great disservice. She cannot cry. But the moment she sees Rama, she starts praising him. Vyakta mehesha maha yogi paramatma sanatana anadi madhya nidana mahadav paramo mahanta masav paramo dhata shanka chakra gada dhara shri vatsavakshaha nitya shri ajayaha shashvato dhruvaha As soon as she praises the final rites of uh, Ravana has done. Even today, the language which is largely spoken in Sri Lanka, which is called Singalam or Sinhalese, there are many places which in their local language is associated with Ramayana. So, there is a place called uh, uh, Hambantota. There is a place called Kelaniya. There is a place called Nuvara Eliya. There is a place on the way to Velimada called Sita Eliya. There is a place where Agni Pariksha was performed called Divurum Pola. Divurum Pola means the place where the oath was taken. So even today if people have to resolve a lot of the personal tiffs, they come to that place and do Satya Pramana in Lanka. So all these places are found. Now Rama tells, Hanuman, you go and inform Sita. She must be worried. Who has won over the war? Instead, the, you know, the radio signals were not that great. She may not know what is happening. You go and inform that I have won over Ravana. Hanuman finds it the 
exciting news. He goes running. Vadi Shobhanam, Yirindra Shobhanam, Mangala Shobhanam. Things well have happened. Rama has won over Ravana. That is when Sita who was worried till then what will happen. Because she knew from the smoke emanating that there is some big yuddham happening. And Trijata was there to console and convince her. But here, the moment Hanuman informed, she said, See, that day while I was on the verge of committing suicide, it was you who came and said, Do not worry, Rama is coming. Now while I am still troubled who has won over the Yudham, it is again you who is coming as Mukhya Prana Devata and Madhva Sampradaya is called Mukhya Prana Devata. You are coming and giving back life to me. I don't know what I can give you in return, Hanuman. Can I keep my head at your feet? Shall I keep my head at your feet, Hanuman, for all the services you have rendered? Hanuman, who spoke Tamil, said, Others can fall at the feet of Amma. Amma will never fall at the feet of others. Priyama Khyami De Devi Bhuyas Chatvam Sabhajaye Tava Prabhava Dharma Nye Mahan Ramena Sanyuge Labdho Yam Vijaya Sita Svastha Bhavata Dajwara Ravanas Chahata Shatru Lanka Chaiva Vashikrita Sita tells, Nahi Pashyami Sadrisham Chintayanti Plavangama Akhyana Kasya Bhavato Datum Pratyabhinandanam Pratyabhinandanam I do Namaskaram to you in reciprocation. Then after she was elated upon hearing the news, Rama calls Vibhishana. He tells him, murmur something in his ears and say, Vibhishana is a bit confused hearing this message. Should I go really? Go, 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 tell this you do. It was a huge arena, an amphitheater like set up. So there were monkeys which they were already tired after the yuddham. Then the Rakshasas also had survived. So they were all very tired, but they wanted to have a glimpse of Sita because they were fighting all these days for a lady whom they've never seen. What is she will be fighting in for her name? Let her come. So Vivekana goes and informs to Sita. Mata, I have some message. Please take it in the right spirit. Rama says you have to take bath first. Dress up well in silk clothes. Put all the jewellery and then come in a palanquin to the arena. Sita was confused. See, she had not taken bath. Abhyakta rekha, amiba chandra rekha. See, she sat in the same place where she had come. Only thing she would do. It doesn't mean she never got up from that place. All these days, the only thing that she would do is, she would not eat anything. She would do Sandhya Vandhanam till Sundarakantam. She goes to the waters, a small rivulet close by, and used to do Sandhya Vandhanam in the evening. So Sita used to do. This is what Sundarakantam tells, nothing else. Now she was dirty, she looked like there was a thin layer of dust enveloping her because she had not taken bath. And she thought, see, after having undergone so much with a torn pallu, with dirt all over me, Rama, the hero, may want to see me this way, right? In what state I am been waiting for him. That's how we see most movies. The heroine will be so tired. The hero will come. There will be one background music. You all must have attended Mustafa, Mustafa yesterday. Uh, there will be one uh, BG, BGM behind. Then this heroine will come slowly. The hero will come. They will hug each other. Vanakkam, Shubham, thank you. We will conclude. So she thought Rama would be. And then he's asking her, take bath, come well dressed. Then... People will think that she was like this, in this state in Lanka. But Vibhishana says, see, I don't know, you may make your own judgments, but this is what Rama said. Okay, if he has said, okay, she dressed up well, she put all the jewellery, she sat on the palanquin, the palanquin came to that particular place. And then all the monkeys and the Rakshasas were waiting. Well, how she will be? How will she be? Will she be a personification of immaculate beauty, spotless beauty? This is what they were thinking. That is when Rama said, When all of you have walked all over through the bridge, have been fighting relentlessly with so much of energy in you, does this lady deserve a palanquin? Keep the palanquin down. Vibhishana turned towards Rama. He only said, bring her in palanquin. <laughs> what is this man? Why is he like this? I thought he was Raghu uh, Rama, he has become Raghu Varan. <laughs> huh? so why is he asking him to keep the palanquin down? Then Sita gets out. As she walks, hmm, you put on some weight. Maybe Lanka cuisine is very good. Huh? You seem to be very happy in Lanka. See, as your wedded husband, it was my duty 
to come and fight the war. I know you are very capable, but I had to do my duty because I promised your father that I will take good care of you. She is my prized possession. I regard her as my very life. I did this, so I have protected you. I have fought the war. My duty is done. You may, if see, if you wish to marry uh, Angada, Sugriva, whomever you wish, all these are shlokas. You may marry. I am leaving this place. Sir, I should have not come the eight days. First eight days, Ramayana, is this the way Rama behaves? Immediately somebody will take an excerpt of this. That is why we say anti-Rama agitation. So, so, Rama tells this. Remember day three, Sita, day four, Sita said at the age of uh, 18, while Rama said that I am going to the forest and Sita said I wish to come with you and Rama said no you shouldn't come to the forest. She said Kimtva manyata vaidehaha pitame mithiladipaha Rama jama ataram prapya striyam purusha vigraham If you are refusing to take me to the forest I just can conclude that my father did not get me married to a man of great valor. You must also be a woman like me disguised as a man. This is what she said, Sriyam Purusha Vigraham Rama then said, come to the forest. Right? So Sita is no normal individual who needs us to become advocates for her. We all become advocates. How dare Rama do this to Sita? Sita can fight her own case. She has the courage to win over Rama in a war too. Be it a verbal war or even a war of archery. She can win over. But she stood calm. Why? Because what Rama was throwing as an allegation at her, close to what maligning her character, is what she did to Lakshmana. In Aranyakantam, when Rama's voice of cry, the war cry was heard, help was heard, Sita thought it must be Rama and she said, Lakshmana, you go. Lakshmana said, don't worry, my brother is Ajata, Shatru, Asahaya, Shura, Anapaya, Sasa, don't worry. That time she said, I know you've been waiting for all these 13 years to have a relationship with me. She said this. To a person who had relentlessly served her as a very son, no son would even serve like this. And that man, in one instant, she hurt him, she maligned him, she accused him. She may have felt bad for it later, no doubt. But feel, see, you cannot utter whatever you like and then say, no, yesterday I felt very bad, I shouldn't have done that. You should have thought of all this before speaking. What is the, doing a prize with the power manipulator? So, Rama wanted to give her a sense of how it will feel when you are thrown the same accusation for no reason while you threw the same accusation at Lakshmana for no reason. Now you may wonder, sir, Rama could have done that somewhere in the private room. <laughs> Taking Sita, you should have not done this. Okay, you should not do this. From next time onwards, no. Hmm? And then he could have brought that. Correct. Rama could have done that. Then, it may seem like a bitter medicine to us. But, the human buddhi, the manushya buddhi is like this. Whether we like it or not, how much ever Ramayana I say, how much ever you listen, how much ever Bhagavatam I say and you listen, how much ever Bhagavad Gita I internalize and you internalize, at the end of the day we will become humans. Right? So if our children do something, it is okay. Somebody else does this, that is a fault. Many houses traditionally, I don't know, it's not happening, should not be happening now. If the daughter does, it is still okay. The daughter-in-law shouldn't be doing this. Because she isn't mine. So this my and my possession always takes prominence over something which is not mine. Which is a wrong treatment. If it is a mistake, whoever commits, it is a mistake. Even if the person is a vidwan, if he commits, it is a mistake. Even a person who is a peasant who commits it, it is a mistake. Just because you are born into a certain caste, certain religion, certain creed, certain gender, it doesn't mean that this mistake is okay if that person does it. Correct. So you cannot do gradation in mistakes. Mistake, case scenario one. If this person does it, this mistake is okay. I don't know if you know this. 
There's a saying in Malayalam. Keshavan unnengil kevelam dosham illa kes dismiss. Are you? Enda ana idu udhaharanam. Yaan bariya. So there was a king. Okay. This king had a beautiful Nandavanam. You know, and in that Nandavanam he used to cultivate and make beautiful roses. But there was a boat kept there. If you pluck the roses, you will be punished. In I don't know here in Bharat Desham, poor thing, the house owner will be cultivating plants. But there will be many astikas who will go for a morning 5 a.m. walk along with a cover. My bhakti will start with the flowers that are fruits of the next person. Where does this idea come from? We see that person is not doing nothing wrong. They all got it from Bhagavatam. What Satyabhama desired was a tree to compete with Rukmini, but all the flowers will fall only in Rukmini's courtyard. So this king had this beautiful roses, Nandavana. So if somebody would pluck the flowers for no lame reason, then that person will be punished. This was the general law, people knew of it. One day the roses went missing. So immediately the king gave a judgment. Whoever has done it, this heinous crime of plucking these roses shall be guillotined. Done. Iti hastakshanam, the raja signed. Then the minister came and said, Sir, one thing. The person who has plucked is your son, Keshavan. Keshavan anid jaina. Then how could this punishment go to his son? It is his dear son, his DNA, ATGC, right? That is your DNA thing. How could he give it A positive, A positive? Same skin, same mandapuddhi. So how could he punish his son? So he gave a postscript note behind that judgment. Keshavan undengit. If the mistake has been committed by Keshava, Kevala Dosha Millai, Kesa Dismiss. So if it is my son Keshava who has committed the mistake, it is no crime. Keshava Nilangi, then kill him. If it is not Keshava. So Rama did not want to have a democracy this way, wherein the leader himself does mistakes. Right? But nobody should question that leader. So that is why Rama thought only in the public if I reprimand that person, even if it is my beloved wife, so what? People will know that people in positions should not misuse that position. If he had not punished, then it will be like, see, if anybody else had accused Lakshmana, Rama would have punished. It's his wife, man. Pundatiya Pita. In Tamil Nadu, it is called Chidambara Rahasya. You protect your son and the son protects the father. I am talking generally about the Chidambara Rahasya. So, Rama wanted to throw the kiss. Now Sita, see I, I told you, I have told you time and again that Sita was a very very bold woman. She could have said, to hell with you and your judgment, I am taking the flight to Nepal and going to, it's her father's land, right? Bye. She could have gone. She could have taken, she could have said Tata because Tata has taken the airline. So, and gone there. But why didn't she do it? Because she knew she was at fault. The moment this, she was waiting, she knew her husband well. She knew this day would come. So she immediately wanted to prove that she had sought remorse for the mistake that she had done. For accusing a Bhagavata, she had sought remorse. Prayas Chitta. So in those days, the one of the easiest ways to accept your mistake and prove that you have sought remorse for your mistake was to prove in one of the Panchabhutas. Either you cross water or you uh, jump into fire. When I say fire, not blazing fire. It will just be like... In some of the places they heat up stones and then you'll have to walk on it to just say, see, I have undergone this. You may say it's not required. It, in those days it was. So Sita had to, 
needed fire, she didn't have a matchbox. Who will she go and ask? She cannot ask the judge Rama himself. See, the judge tells that five thousand dollars is the penalty. I don't have the judge, sir. You give me five thousand dollars now. Every month I will return to you two fifty, two fifty. Judge will give you a letter. So she couldn't ask fire from Rama. The only person whom she knew well, other than Rama, was Lakshman. So she went and asked Lakshmana, Lakshmana light this fire. So Rama led her to Lakshmana, the one to whom she had performed the mistake. Lakshmana couldn't stand this. Whatever said and done, she is my mother. Can she come and plead? So he looked at Rama. Rama what? He didn't say. He just looked at Rama. What is this? What are you doing? Kamban, the Tamil poet beautifully makes a mention. Avan kannil koorinan. Rama told Lakshmana, you do. So it was lit. Sita went into. Then the monkeys thought, for this, why did we have to fight? We are about to roll, 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 roll. Shut up, what about it? In the night, when we were both angry, we were doing what we were angry. We were angry. We have been fighting all these days. So then. One another person with lot of bruises all over his body holds Sita and comes out. Rama says, "Who are you? You looked very damaged." He says, "My, I am Agni Devata. Generally, I burn people. Her purity, her thought process, her intellect, her way of looking at the world has burnt me. She has touched the pinnacle of what purity is." And he says, purity, purity of thoughts. Please give me Barnal. I don't know. Again, Barnal. So, give me that. Then, now, what should have happened if Sita had really thought what Rama had done was bad? He shouldn't have done this. She could have said, okay, Rama, I've done this Agni Pariksha. Namaskaram. Hope you let's stay in touch for a few days. I need to think it over. Then she could have gone. She was a bold woman. But then they started speaking normally and naturally. Oh, what did you eat? They started speaking. Oh, how did you spend your time? I was always thinking of you. So this incident was enacted to the entire crowd to say, do not judge or doubt people without proof. See here, generally you are all people who serve yourself. There is no concept of a person who helps you out. There is no concept of a maid. She may come once in 15 days and does. You are all people who are self-sufficient. You manage on your own, which is super good. But there is a concept of having a maid who helps you, he or she, in many of the Southeast Asian countries. But it is a sad thing when something goes missing in the house. Even without knowing where it has gone, who might have taken, the first thing that comes to the mind of a person is he or she might have taken. That is why Yudhishthira tells in Yaksha Prashtam, who should be respected? Bhrityaha, people who serve you should be respected, never doubt them. Unless and until you have solid proof. Sita did that to Lakshmana. So this is an exemplification of how well behaved we should be to people around us. Now they sat in the Pushpaka Vimana. Now comes another uh, doubt. Sir, you are talking about Pushpaka Vimana. Where there flights before right, brothers. This doesn't seem right. Before right. Huh? There are two, three ways of looking at it. Our understanding of history goes through one of the powerful tools called archaeology. As I excavate, as I decipher inscriptions, and as I understand a lot of other things related to history, I will be able to understand how people lived during those times. Correct? But archaeology and its understanding is a continuous process. No historian well-read historian will say, this is how they lived, I conclude. He will say, as per the artifacts and sources received by me and or by us till date, this is how they lived. There could be more evidences coming. For that excavation should happen. But how will excavation happen? 
um, in outer ring road in Bangalore is full of buildings. Where will you excavate? The only people who excavate in Bharat Desham are the telephone people. So they will keep excavating the same road. Otherwise, there is, where will you go and excavate? It is such a densely populated country. So, every country, every region, every continent needs to excavate to understand its past. So maybe till what we have received, we may not have evidences of how Vaimanika Shastra was used. Maybe that is one probability. Second, see to us, Ramayanam and Mahabharatam, the primary itihasas, come in the form of poetry. Correct. In poetry, you always exaggerate than what is really seen. We are also poets, remember. We are poets. Suppose I sit and drive the car, here, there is a speed limit at which it can go. Certain places it may have to go at 80 miles or 120 miles. My mother who comes and sits next to me, she hasn't gone in such high speed in cars. She goes home and people ask, how did your son drive? Drive? He flew. <laughs> She's a poet. She's exaggerating, right? So I didn't literally fly. I drove, but I drove at a speed which was more or higher than what the normal speed is. So she see, it seems to her as if I'm flying. So poetry can come to us as with a scope of exaggeration. So even if it was a ratham, a chariot, that could become a boat. See, you have seen so many buses that can ply on roads and then become boats. It could have been one of those vehicles that could have plied them to Lanka. Because it used to go at a high speed, it could have been termed as a flight. Correct. So there are many options. Now he used Pushpaka Vimana to call the monkeys and came back to Bharata Desha. On their way back, Rama tells, see, he won't give some free time to Hanuman. That is Rama's job. He will call Hanuman. 14 years is over. Last one hour, Bharata will fall into the fire. Go and protect him. So Hanuman is a Mukhya Prana Devata. Whoever is committing suicide, last minute Hanuman will come and protect. Now, Hanuman goes flying to uh, Ayodhya near Nandigramam. He has lit, lit the fire. He wants to fall because 14 years, he said, 14 years later, one minute I will not wait Rama. So while he was just about to fight, don't stop, 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 stop. Rama is reaching few more minutes, the GPS says. So then, Bharata embraces Hanuman, you have given me such great information. He felt the same feeling as how he embraced Rama and Sundara Kanta. Then Rama arrives. Then Bharata tells, let Paduka Devi do the next coronation. Remember, if there is a king and he wants to coronate his son, the next higher apparent, he will do the Pattabhishekam. Now Dasharatha, after Dasharatha, Rama was to become. Then it went to Bharata. Bharata said he will not become. Then Rama gave his Paduka. So Paduka Devi became the next queen. Now Paduka Devi was brought on the royal elephant called Shrutanjaya with the uh, Chatram and Chamaram. And then they reached Ayodhya and she said through her. She won't speak directly. She executes through Bharata saying that the next king will be Rama. First, Bharata said, first I have to bring one barber. Rama had huge dadi, beard, a jata. First, they all had to be trimmed and he had to be groomed well to become the next king. Shmashru Vardhanaha came. They gave a ceremonial bath to Rama and Sita. They wore beautiful white silks with borders, beautiful borders. You may be wondering, sir, white is allowed in Sanatana Dharma? Yes. Every color is allowed in combination. See, no color in Sanatana Dharma is inauspicious. One color may be better auspicious. There is nothing called an inauspicious color. This may be auspicious, more auspicious. That's all. So, in that white with that border, you know, the next question, sir, was silk allowed? Yes, silk was allowed. Now you may say, no sir, that is uh, himsa to kakuns. I See, you cannot deploy logic everywhere. If you don't want to use, don't use. Simple. Now, was silk used? Yes, Kalidasa says, Chinam Shukaihi, even China silk was used in Kumara Sambhava. Chinam Shukaihi, he says. 
So, as she held a lotus in her hand and then they walked the huge arena to climb the golden laden 18 stairs to sit on the Simhasanam. All the monkeys for Kishkinda people from Karnataka, they had gone to Uttar Pradesh. Then Rakshasas, for them it was a big thing. They had come from Lanka to Uttar Pradesh. Then different Rishis had come. Then uh, Vasishtha was very, very tense. See, he, for him, he was a great Acharya. Vasishtha, we refer to Vyasa as Vyasam. Vasishtha Nabtaram. Vasishtha was a teacher of Rama. You teach Rama, such a great teacher. Besides that, his side job, profession was to be a Purohita. So if uh, devotees come and ask, fix a good Muhurta for our marriage, Sashtyabda Purti, Shada Vishayagam, Bhimarata Shanti, he will do. Similarly, Dasharatha had given him a task, please fix a date for Rama's Patta Vishayagam. He fixed. He was a well-known name then. If you type in Google, first name Vasishta will appear. Search engine optimization will throw his name first. Vasishta, 1 crore, 12,000 results found. So you will get Vasishta first. But Vasishta had the big setback of his life when the date he had fixed couldn't happen because Rama was to go in exile. From then onwards, people started speaking. Avar kitta <laughs> You know, if you go to Vasishtha, that date, I mean, somehow he is not auspicious. Pogari. His business came severely down. Arundhati, she she had no time counting the receipts. This day, enna na So they started going Vasishtha. Lumba nalla vat pogari so Vas Vasishtha had acquired a bad name. He thought, now I have to fix the date again for Rama. What if there is another mantra now coming from some other Uzbekistan or Tajikistan? So he said, people with hunch are prohibited. Outside. Vasishtha was ready. He told Sugriva, please fetch some waters from Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, some of the oceans, South China Sea, however problematic it is, you go and come. So they took all the Kalasham and they had to go. Vasishtha thought it would take a week's time. By the time he finished this instruction and turned, he had brought super monkey. So they took all the Kalasham and all the Rishis had gathered. Markandeya, Maudgalya, Kashyapa and so on. That is when the recitation of Vedas had begun. Rama was holding the hand of Sita. Remember, you see some of the Chalachitrams, the Raja will be seated in Anasanam. Two steps down, the Queen will be seated. That is not how Sanatana Dharma views. Even in a Yagam, the Patni has to sit alongside the husband. Now, what we do generally, we'll put two wooden planks, one plank for the man, one plank for the woman. No. You have to put two separate planks and put a chapa over it, making it one Anasanam. They cannot sit in two. They are one. The couple. It's called Vyasajya Vritti in Nyaya Shastra. You cannot separate them. Even when you give an invitation to the couple, you will not give. Maithiri Mama Kidu. Mama Kidu. You may say Maithiri Adhikar. Mama doesn't have, may not even have a name. So. Avar kitta shunne ila. Anu Mama kitta shunne ila. Javar kitta. So, he is Shriyapati, right? So, it is important you put one asana. So, they started walking one step, one step, one step each at a time and then they reached the Simhasana. Ramam Ratnamaye Pithe Sasitam Sanyaveshayat Vasishtho Vama Devascha Javali Rathakashyapaha Kadhyayanaha Suyagnyascha Gautamo Vijayasthata Abhyashinchan Naravyagra Prasannena Sugandhina The beautiful crown that had adorned some of the greatest kings of Surya Vamsham from Ikshvaku, Mandhata, Aja, Dilipa, Asamanja, Samshuman, Bhagiratha, Mandhata and so on. That Kiritam came which had adorned the auspicious Paduka Devi and Vasishtha took, walked atop the 18 golden laden stairs 
and then placed it on the head of Rama. Ramam Ratnamaye Pithe Sasitam Sanyaveshayatu Vasishtho Vamadevascha Jabalir Athakashyapaha Katyayanaha Suyajnaha Gautamaha Vijayaha Tata Na Abhyashinchan Naravyagra Prasannena Sugandhina Parashara tells Maitreya and Vishnu Puranam Even if you were to give me a thousand years, I will not be able to describe how beautiful that sight was. If Parashara was not able to describe how am I a primitive mortal in front of him. So, Kampan tells Ariyanai Anumantanga Angadan Vudaival Yenda Bharadan Ben Kudaika Vika Machirvarun Kavarivisha Virai Seri Kudali Vonga Vennai Nallur Shadayantangal Maraburor Kudukka Vangi Vasishthane Punaindan Mauli. In fact, one of the greatest Vageya Garas of the South Indian classical Carnatic music, one amongst the Trinity is Tyaga Brimham called Tyagaraja, who was born in Muladhara Kshetram Thiruvarur and later flourished and nurtured in the Panchanadi Kshetram called Thiruvayara. He was a poor person who couldn't manage conducting large festivals, being a bonanza or some with some pomp and show and grandeur. All that he could do was compose Kritis. He wanted to do a grand event for Rama Patta Vishekam, but he couldn't. So he had a small photo given by one of his uh, Sishyas of Rama and he wanted to do a Patta Vishekam. Incidentally, that day one of his Sishyas came and said to our city of Thiruvayyaru, a great Vagayakara called Muttuswami Bhikshitar along with his Veena has come to our city. Can we invite him? Please do. I will go personally and invite him. And he invited Muttuswami Dikshitar. Muttuswami Dikshitar, one of the other great composers, he said, I am honored to see you, Tyagaraja. Tyagaraja said, I am tired of singing. Can you compose a kriti for my Rama? Mama va pata bhi Rama jaya maruti sanutana Padako Dandarama Ganesha Mine Vigraha Janayana Sampuna Kama Raku Rama Kalyana Rama Rama Mama Pata Bhi Lakshman, Shatrugna, Vibhishan, Sugriva, Pramukha, Disevit, Atri, Vasishtya, Dhyanukra, Patra, Dasharatha, Putra, Maniranga, Valyalankrita, Navaratna, Manta Pevi Chitra Mani Maya Sim Hasane Sita Yasa Sucharitra Parama Pavitra Guru Guha Mitra Pankaja Mitra Vamsha Sudha Budi Chandra Midini Pala Rama Chandra Ma Mava Pata Bhi Rama At that point in time, there were different gifts given. So every person brought a gift. What days we tell don't give gift, right? There were days when parents were not that well off where they will depend on the small gifts that come so that they could conduct marriages. Now gifts become a big liability. In my marriage, I received 25 wall clocks. <laughs> I should have a shop. Huh? And at times, it may so happen, if you're that destined, it will be the same that you had gifted. <laughs> and we may also write a lippy over the gift. If somebody gives us, 
one function is coming. We will push it there. Now, so Rama was given different gifts. Indra who had performed Sharanagati along with the Devas to get the demoniac forces annihilated. Every other person gave a gift. Personally. But Indra did not come for Rama Pattabhishekam. Read Ramayana carefully. R Indra alone was absent in Rama Pattabhishekam. He just sent some FedEx gift. <laughs> so Vavaruna or Vayu carried. Avarala Varamudi Lurumba busy away. So, so please take this gift. Rama opened the trapper. He saw a beautiful necklace. The necklace was good. But he had already sported a lot of jewellery. He gave it to Sita. And Sita said, see, I am having a lot of jewellery. I don't know what to do. Then she said, I wish to give it to someone. And Rama knew who that someone was. They were a good couple, so they didn't have to talk much. In Uttama Dampatyam, you should talk less, gestures should be more. Right? So they just looked at their eye glances. Huh? So he knew what she meant. So he said, whomever you wish is worthy of this, give it to them. She called Hanuman. She gave it to Hanuman. And Hanuman took this. This is where Ramayana stops. Of course, Tore Siddhas goes one step ahead. He tore, he saw in that pearl whether Rama's. All that is not there in Ramayana. Now, the beauty is, Ramayana and Bhagavatam should be seen as Eka Shastra. They are all one Shastra. It may look like similar words. In Rama Pattabhishekam, everybody was present but Indra. When Krishna lifted Govardhanam and then Indra's arrogance was subdued and then there was Govinda Pattabhishekam through Kamadhenu by Indra, Indra alone was present and nobody else. So the Lord said, if you have missed this, you come there, I know how to complete that particular calculation. Govardhana, Giridhara, Krishna. Every action in Bhagavatam will be a completion of what was incomplete in Ramayana. You have to see it that way. Okay. Now, this Pattabhishekam was done. Hanuman was uh, given so much of importance. Then, Labdhva Kuladhanam Raja. Then everybody had to be given return gift. In the last 50 years, that is one thing we have learned. Right. Somebody gives a gift. We have to give a return gift. Some people are very intelligent. If I go to their house, So, he had to give a return gift. Everybody was given whatever gift. Organs are. Paithani. Pochampalli. Whatever, whichever whistle you say. Now, Viveshana came. Viveshana said, my wife doesn't wear all this. She is very simple. What can we give? Even she won't wear Shungadi also. No, Shungadi also. Huh? He said, I want something that you treasure the most. The Lord thought for a minute. He said, my ministers, go to the Ranga Mandhiram here. The Ikshvakukula Daivam, the family deity whom we have been worshipping as Ranganatha. Along with that Pranavakara Vimanam, lift that. He is a bodybuilder. He can take that in one. Vibhishana, I give you my Kuladhanam. He gave Ranganatha from Uttar Pradesh crossroad, Uttar Pradesh main road, Uttar Pradesh to Vibhishana. And Vibhishana took that and on his journey to Lanka, he stopped at a place where Dharma Varma, a Chola Raja was performing penance and that was in Sri Rangam. So he placed it there and went. So, Labdhva Kuladanam Raja. So, Vibhishana was given and then you have Ranganatha here. Srimad Ramayanam is such a beautiful Shastra. It is called uh, Mukhya Pramanam by all our Acharyas. Every word of Valmiki is a Mukhya Pramanam. It can never be disputed. If there are contradicting statements of one particular character and an incident from Valmiki Ramayanam and any other Puranam, all our Acharyas with Aikakantyam unanimously say that Ramayanam's version is the authentic one than the other Puranam. So Ramayanam is that important. It has been celebrated by Valmiki. It has been commented upon by many revered commentators. It has been translated, transcreated by stalwarts in regional languages. So many Kritis. How much it has reached the islands of the archipelago nation, Indonesia to Thailand, the kings of Thailand are suffixed as Raman even till date. How much 
Ramayanam has traveled in the Southeast Asian countries, in some of the Eastern countries, in some of the Central Asian countries, in some of the countries of the Middle East, some countries of even the African continent is something that research scholars and students who love to read such research works will be flabbergasted when they read such conclusions and such illustrations. <coughs> Ramayanam is so important, let me hope. In the month of December 2021, December or November, uh, Sriman Sriram con uh, contacted me and said, uh, I think people need some change and they need to get back to the olden days of listening to discourses. Can we have Ramayana? This is what our committee feels is the right thing. Can we do Samraja Patak? Okay, I said nine days we can do. And coming like flown 10,000 miles or even more number of miles coming here, I generally visit the other cities. So there was immediately most temples said, oh, we would like to have not one day, seven days of lecture. So it was fixed across 10 cities from the east to the west coast. 10 cities. I had five, six Bhagavata Saptahams lined up. Each Saptaham of seven days in six cities. In the west coast three, east coast four, I think. Then there was one Narayani Saptaham at uh, New Jersey, Gurvayra Pantin. Then there was something in Boston and then there was something in Dallas. And then there was Ramayana Navaham here. So Bhagavatam was taking prominence like six one Narayanim. Narayanim is also Bhagavatam in a way. So all this. But then uh, the, uh, the visa in which we come, we all come through a performing artist visa called P3 and that is that that was not given much prominence in the post-pandemic period. So it was not approved. So what was scheduled for a trip couldn't happen. So we thought that even this will get cancelled. But you wouldn't believe this is the only program that have come for. Because wow. the visa got approved so late. So Ramayana had to happen. So probably that's the Icha of the Lord, maybe Bhagavatam later in the other cities is what he has taken a sankalpam of. We try. But this is what he has disposed. This is what he has given. So uh, in 2022, this is the only US trip, only for Ramayana and Abaham that I have made to uh, this very closely related temple of mine, which is the revered Sri Shiva Vishnu temple. Uh, maybe this is the fourth time that I'm performing here and this is the been the longest stretch of nine days and generally as organizers uh, you will all know that when there are many events happening many of them will prefer only the weekends and that to one day one day and that too that should be a Saturday or a Sunday maybe Friday is the second promise Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday weekdays are week <laughs> so they are not given much prominence but this had to happen I cannot have Saturday Sunday day 3 day 4 next Saturday and Sunday then 2 months I will have to keep it then it will become like uh, wah, 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 one Dandakaranyam for me <laughs> so that is when we had to have it for a stretch of 9 days of course there are 2 weekends there are weekdays as well but surprisingly I don't know how surprised the volunteers and the bhaktas were there were many people driving for different corners of Virginia through the weekdays to listen to this lecture. Why? Because Srimad Ramayanam, trust me, it, it you can simplify this. After 20 and a half hours of my lectures, I can tell Ramayanam in one sentence. Rama was married, Dasharatha Putra Rama was married to Janakaputri Sita, who lived happily while they were ha they happened to go on an exile to the forest for 14 years. And in the due course, she was abducted, taken to Lanka. Rama built a bridge, showcased his love for her, brought her back to Ayodhya, and ruled the world ever after. 20 and a half hours. I can summarize it in one line. Correct? Not even 10 seconds. So, any story could be done a vistaram or could be told in a sankshepa fashion. And the biography of Rama as presented by Valmiki is nothing new to us here. Many of you elderly people would have heard stalwart speak, speaking, will be speaking in all tenses you would have heard. And you would have heard Ramayana many times. And especially Valmiki Ramayana, whatever I have presented doesn't have many aberrations and many versions. It is the same version. But what pulses again and again to listening of Ramayana. Tell me in this world, a biography of a person being told in different corners of the world, in different points in time, and people want to keep listening to it again and again. You know, the world can't think of such a situation. They'll say, same thing? Again and again? Oh, that's not going to happen. 
that's boring but here is ramayanam told by so many people in different parts of the world time and again but still people feel as if they are listening to it for the first time so there must be some some uh, magic portion in it right there must be something which is not visible to our eyes which is attracting people that is what is referred to as bhakti that unseen thing is bhakti that love for no reason prejudice could be a dislike for no reason bhakti is a liking for no reason so that bhakti is what is interspersed and intertwined in this beautiful scripture which brings people of maryland some people from north carolina some people from new jersey many people from virginia to this one spot through the week for 9 days so kudos and accolades my namaskarams to the bhakti of such bhagavatas who have been coming for all the 9 days my namaskarams to the temple management for murali uh, mantra so for being uh, uh, so supportive throughout i am sure a lot of you are also aware this is pravachanam this is discourse last for 2 2 and a half hours every day there is parayanam which has been happening every day it's a sampurna mahayagyam the 24000 verses every day there is parayanam happening in of course the first the, the uh, bhagavatar had to come from india till here but again there was a visa problem so he has been doing it in the evening in bharat desham it is the evening where it's morning here so he has been doing it for 6 and a half hours every day for 9 days so to complete that parayanam parayanam is happening there pravachanam is happening here and then priests and bhagavatas from bhadrachalam the divya temple from the banks of river godavari they have come and they have been performing the kalyana utsavam and all the agamic procedures for the shri, sampurna shri rama rajya sa, sa, pattabhishek mahotsavam every day so it's been a three pronged approach so there is one the agama based tradition there is a pravachanam there is a parayanam and this can be this can happen so successfully so beautifully so aesthetically only if like minded astikas and bhagavat uttamas come together and that is what has happened here and this also happens to be the day as we speak in a few hours from now bharat desham will be seeing the 75th year or its independence from the colonial rule don't think bharatam was born 75 years back it's a timeless civilization an ancient and a living civilization from the colonial rule we thought we could do a better job that's what we've been thinking and we have been ruling so it's a 75th year so i'm sure this land of the of america has housed me as its guest for all these years i've been coming and going and now as well so my namaskarams to this punya bhumi as well wherever we stay that particular land should be revered and respected so my namaskarams though i may not be a citizen of this country i have been a beneficiary of the love of the citizens of this country so i salute this beautiful land this also has beautiful rivers holy rivers wherever bhagavatas are rivers become holy so we have such beautiful temples i have myself performed in close to 92 temples in the us okay so uh, i can tell you such well maintained temples such great bhaktas so it's a punya bhumi many of you will be citizens of this country so technically you are all maybe indian origin americans so you have to be very very respectful towards this land wish it well good prosperity so while this country being one of the most powerful democracies in the world i come from the world's largest democracy four times the population of what this country has is what i have in my country and she is a civilization where most nations in the world didn't even know where the people didn't know what to cover themselves with the private parts or whether they should be fighting and eating what we had pravara sena writing one setu bandhana kavyam we had one valmiki discussing about forms of poetry we had aryabhatta talking about the value of pai chaturadika shatam ashtagunam dwa ayu sashti ayudascha things were just happening it just it was so easy for them to come up with mathematical formulas and come up with codes so when most nations didn't exist that nation where i come from where some of you may have your origins from 
came up with some of the best facets of human sciences and history and arts and archaeology and architecture, speaking such great laurels of her. So I come from that land, so I would like to conclude this um, with this. Those of you who know can see. Sujalam Suphalam Malaya Jashitalam Shasya Shyamalam Mataram Vande Mataram Vande Mataram Shubhra Jotsna Pulakita Yamini Shubhra Jotsna Pulakita Yamini Pulakusumita Druma Dhalasho Bini Suha Sini Suma Dura Bashini Sukadam Varadam Mataram Vande Mataram Vande Mataram 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 Ramachandraya Janaka Raja Jamano Haraya Mamata Krishnaraya Mahita Mangalam Kosalendraya Manda Asada Sakoshanaya Vasa Vadi Vinodasar Varada Mangalam Charu Kungumo Veda Chandanadi Charchitaya Haraka Shobhitaya Puri Mangalam Narita Ratna Kundaraya Tula Sivana Madikaya Jalaja Sadrushate Haya Charu Mangalam Vimala Rupaya Vimida Vedanta Vedyaya Sujana Chitta Kamitaya Shubhaga Mangalam Ramadasa Mududa Hridaya Thamarasa Nivasaya Swami Bhadra Kirivaraya Sarva Mangalam Swami Bhadra Kirivaraya Sarva Mangalam Swami Meri Bhoomi Kirivaraya Sarva Mangalam Namaskaram Kavitadhira Sinhaya Kalyana Purushadini Shrimate Venkateshaya Vedanta